great group. All right. <laughs> Hey, super group, and thank you for joining us, everybody. Let's play our little X and O game called Tic-Tac-Toe and meet our current champion, and here he is right now. Right, Wink, our current champion, whose winnings in cash total $1,100, is a paramedic and a firefighter. Meet Mark Markin. And his opponent is from Cleveland, Ohio, an administrative analyst who studied for the opera. Meet Sharon Key. Poor cool man's Richard Dawson here. <laughs> hey, Sharon, welcome back. Thank you. Sharon's our Same. opera singer, as Jay said. And, uh, you know, opera is a category, for some reason, that gives a lot of people, uh, our contestants, a lot of troubles on this show. But uh, if it should come up, and we have no idea what subjects come up from game to game. What's your favorite opera? You're an opera singer. Aida, really. Aida. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beauty. And yeah. so are you. And welcome Thank to our show. You. Good luck to you. Sharon Keyes. Mark Martin is our current champion. Mark has won thus far $1,100. And uh, as Jay said, he's a paramedic and a firefighter. And what's more important possibly than that is home life, your lovely wife, and the fact that uh, you're expecting a blessed event. Yes, we are. We're expecting a baby, uh, a baby boy next June. Two or one? or <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Notice how he says that, gals. We're expecting a baby boy. Hear that, Lord? A baby boy next June. Well, good luck to you. Thank Just you. A, a, a good, healthy baby, right? <laughs> right? That's what we're really looking for. Mark, welcome back. Let's have a nice round of applause for two fine players. So, Mark and Sharon, if you'll feast your eyes on the board, we'll take a look at our categories. We're dealing with these subjects in the game. Famous couples, the 40s, television roles, presidents, odd facts, second jobs, maps of nations, Jacks and Johns, and let's not forget, women in sports. Here's what the board looked like when we uh, finished up on the last show. We had to stop with two X's for Mark, two O's for Sharon, and let's shuffle and we'll move back to Mark with $900 in the pot. Mark, what do you see that you particularly like? <laughs> I think I better try to block with odd facts. Yeah, whether you particularly <laughs> like it or like not. <laughs> All right, Mark, block Sharon by answering this correctly. This town in Pennsylvania is named after a popular chocolate bar, which is made there. The chocolate factory, which is the world's largest, produces over 200 million candy bars a year. To block Sharon, name this town. I hope it's Nestle. Oh, Mark, that's their Nine. stiffest competition. There, I don't think there's a Nestle, Pennsylvania, but there is a Hershey, Hershey. Pennsylvania. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. But a box of Nestle bars to you, Mark. <laughs> Let's move the categories around. $900 in the pot. Sharon, your turn again. Oh, I'm going to have to go with women in sports to win, but believe it or not, that's my worst. In other words, you are not a, uh, a sports fan, per se. Football, yes, but yeah. not... We'll see. Maybe Not many girls playing way. football these days, Sharon. <laughs> Basketball, maybe. All right, here is your question. You're going for tic-tac-toe. If you answer it correctly, you will win $1,100. Some of the famous champions in this sport are professionals Babe Didrikson, Hollis Stacy, and Judy Rankin. For tic-tac-toe and $1,100, name the sport. I guess golf? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> is that the one that you just felt? A complete guess. Well, it's a guess that <laughs> meant $1,100 to you, Sharon, because it gives you tic-tac-toe on the championship on this show <laughs> with the right to uh, beat the monster that you'll never see on a stage singing any opera, and that's our big green dragon, Sharon. We'll get to that shortly. Hey, Mark, the guys at the uh, firehouse, all the other paramedics and the firefighters, they got to be happy with you because you came on the show uh, with no winnings and you're going to leave here with $1,100 and they got to be pretty thrilled. And I'm sure you are too. They won't be taking it. Thank you very much, Mark. Mark, and congratulations. We'll take Sharon to try to defeat the dragon right after we take this break. Says if you defeat four more opponents, you'll win one of these and Jay Stewart's going to tell us what it is. It's a brand new car! The all-new Buick Skylark, designed for comfort and convenience with front-wheel drive, providing impressive control and traction, furnished by Buick. In addition, polyglycoat sound shield for the noisy underside of your car, not an undercoating. Polyglycoat is a sound shield, available to new car dealers only. Back now to Wink Martindale. And Sharon, I'm just going to invite you over here and let's see if we can beat this dragon in short order. Come on over.
Job well done. All right, let's take a look at the board now. Behind the numbers, as you know, uh, sharing a various amounts of money and a big green dragon. All you have to do is reach $1,000 or more, and you win the prize package. Now, we're going to give you gifts for your den. Hope you have a den. I will. Okay. Jay Stewart, what have you got for Sharon's den? Well, first, Sharon, your den will be filled with music with the stereo and speakers. A complete home music system featuring famous realistic components. Stereo receiver, turntable, and speaker systems from Radio Shack. And you'll be able to relax in your den with this comfortable recliner. Lazy Boy Chair. Perfect where space is limited. These wall recliners will recline when placed one inch from the wall. Gives you that Lazy Boy comfort and built-in quality. And you'll be able to play back your tape recordings because we're giving you a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And finally, Sharon, you can view your favorite programs anytime because your next gift is your own video tape recorder. It's a Sony Betamax. Hours of pleasurable entertainment will be yours with this tape playback video recorder. With Sony's space age technology and rugged construction, you'll see what you're missing. And Sharon, these gifts for the day are worth in cash and prizes almost $3,400. All right, put your wits together now. Put your good guesses together. Avoid the bracket if you lose everything. Get the tick and the tack and you automatically get the dough. Let's cover them up, move them around on the board. Sharon, let's really do this now. Okay, huh? I'm ready. I, I have to record myself. That's going to be great, you know? Oh, that's super. <laughs> Of course, you know what you have to do first. I have to beat the dragon. You got that right. Go. <laughs> this girl needs some help. I'll start with five. You're going to start with number five, all righty. Behind number five, what do we have? Tick, add it to tack, you got to win. Now look out at these wonderful people, and what do you find? What do you find that they like that agrees with what you like? All right, my sister says six. Number six? All right, what's behind number six? To go with Tick, Number six shows us what? The dragon. Can you believe that? Oh, you just needed one little number. My sister's supposed to have ESP. I'll just follow my own if I can get another If chance. you get back here and get a shot at it again, you just stay on your own. Leave it up to sweet Sharon. Let's look at the rest of the board. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, and nine showed us all of those denominations of money. And the tack, which would have given you an automatic win after getting tick, was up there behind number two. However, you have your $1,100 in cash. Congratulations for that. And let's go back, meet somebody else, and get another game underway. Here we go. All right, Jay Stewart, who do we have for our opera sing-off? He's a salesman for a computer company. Wink and his interests include reading, racquetball, and flying. Meet Ron Duvall. Ron comes flying in here and hope he's going to be flying high playing tic-tac-toe shortly. How you doing, Ron? Fine. Tell Real us fine. about your flying, Ron. Uh, right now, I just fly small airplanes, puddle jumpers, but I got my training in the Air Force. Yeah. What do you, what do you fly? Uh, right now? Yeah. Uh, just uh, Cessnas, Pipers, that sort of what thing. What did you fly? In the Air Force, I flew B-52 bombers, uh, commonly called the uh, Subsonicus Swinicus. What does that mean? Uh, the slow pig, loosely translated. <laughs> <you know. laughs> I won't pursue that, but I will ask you this, something I've always wondered. What's it like to be a combat pilot? Uh, basically, Wink, it's just long hours of sheer boredom interspersed by moments of stark terror. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds dangerous to me. Well, you have to be a little careful, but there's an old saying that there are old pilots and there are bold pilots, but not many old, bold, bold pilots. pilots. <laughs> I knew that was coming up. Well, let's see how boldly you play tic-tac-toe. All right, Ron? <laughs> Here we go. Sharon and Ron, take a look at the board. Our subjects for this game are numbers, fads and follies, foods, baseball, musicals, jumbled words, military leaders, sex symbols, and solar system. All right, Sharon? Oh, you're not going to shuffle. <laughs> okay. No uh, shuffle till after the uh, answer. How about foods in the corner? Okay, foods up in the top right-hand corner. Question, Sharon. The name of a popular Italian dish in which the pasta is baked in layers comes from a Latin word meaning cooking pot. Name this pasta dish. I think it's my sister's best dish, lasagna. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Nothing better than my favorite lasagna. Put an X there. Let's move the categories around, $200 in the pot. All right, old Ron, let's get it going. Uh, Wink, I'll go to the center and try numbers. Numbers it is. That's worth $300 to the pot, Ron. A famous collection of tales called The Arabian Nights features stories about Sinbad and Alibaba. According to these classic tales, first, how many voyages did Sinbad make? And then, how many thieves did Alibaba encounter? Here's your extra time to give that some thought. <laughs> Oh, 
Arabian Nights, <clears throat> featuring stories about Sinbad and Alibaba. How many voyages did Sinbad make, Ron? A seven. Yes. How many thieves did Alibaba encounter? Forty. Yes, you got it. Put it over there, 300 to pot. Let's shuffle the categories around and see what comes up. That's Sharon cares for on the board. Sharon? Hmm. Musicals. In Musicals, top left. All righty. Sharon, this 1960 Broadway musical starred Tammy Grimes and told the story of an unsinkable female. Name her. Unsinkable Molly Brown. Right. Another X in that position on the board. Musicals, X, $200 to pot. Let's shuffle. And go back to Ron Duvall for his pick. What is it, Ron? Uh, I have to go to the top center with fads and follies to block one. Answer this to block Sharon. This mystical board was invented in 1904 and was a fad during World War I, the 40s, and the 60s. It contained numbers, letters, and the words yes, no, and goodbye. For a block, name it. The Ouija board. Yes, that's right, the Ouija board. So we put it over and move the categories around. Good for a block, $900 in the pot. Sharon, it's your turn. Have we uh, shuffled the... Yeah, there we go. Okay, Sharon. Sex symbols in the bottom. Sex symbols Corner. bottom right. Here comes your question. A poster featuring this sexy star of the movie, Tin, sold over a half million copies in just one month. Name her. Bo Derek. Right. Here's a turn. You got an X for that. Let's shuffle the categories. $1,100 in the pot. Mr. Duvall. Um, I have to go to the bottom center with military leaders to win. Military leaders to win, yes, for a vertical tic-tac-toe. Answer this and you'll pick up $1,300, Ron, and you'll become our champion. Listen carefully. In 49 BC, this Roman military leader commanded his troops across the Rubicon River and won a civil war against his political rival, Pompey. That's for Pompey, Wayne. Pompey, I'm sorry. For $1,300 in tic-tac-toe, Name him. Julius Caesar. Right, you win. <laughs> some people say Pompey, some people say Pompey. Ron, congratulations to you. You have $1,300 to show for your efforts. You become our new champion. And Sharon, you have $1,100 for your efforts. And uh, you made a mighty pretty picture on television. And I'm just sorry that we didn't get around to hearing you sing one of those arias or a, or a couple of notes of using your beautiful voice. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Good luck to you. Sharon Keys. Ron, you want to give this a go? You bet. Well, come on, let's get over here and do it. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You're here to try to shoot for the same prizes that Sharon lost out on because she hit the dragon on, I think, the second or third uh, selection a while ago. You're going for a den package, right? Yes. Remember that? And uh, it's a nice... Do you have a den at home? Yes, I do. All right, then could you use some goodies? I certainly could. All right, if you answer or if you get to $1,000 without finding the dragon, you'll get a stereo, you'll get a very nice recliner, a very, very beautiful tape recorder, and you'll also get a videotape recorder, which might come in handy. You don't Absolutely. have one of those, do you? Not at Not all. How many homes are outfitted with those yet? But that would come to a grand total in prizes to $3,400. Mighty nice prize package, one of our best. Okay, so you ready? You bet. You'll see in a moment the dragon jumping all over the board. There he is right now. We're going to cover him up, and you'll see nine numbers then show up on the board. You know how it works. Yes. Uh, get to $1,000 without finding the dragon, and you are home free, my friend, so select. Uh, scared me to death out here in the audience. <laughs> Uh, let's try three. Number three it is. All right, let's take a look behind the third number on the board. We find the dragon. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You sure made short shrift to this game. Is that a number that you picked from somebody out there that they yelled out? or did you? Well, uh, no, it just happened to spring into my mind, and I guess I've got the dragon on my mind or well, something. Uh, you should, after seeing him behind number three, your first selection. Let's look at the rest of the board, and we'll show you that there were, there's tick and tack right up there behind one and two, and a lot of money on the board. However, you have a nice, tidy sum. $1,300 in cash is winning so far as our champion. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we'll continue tick tack day. is doing all right for himself. Didn't beat the dragon, but let's see what he does against this next opponent. Who is that opponent, Jake? This opponent is a secretary who has worked as a hostess, and her interests include science fiction and music. Meet Lucinda Dressel. Hello, Lucinda. Hi there. That's an unusual name, Lucinda. How'd you come up with that name? Well, it was sort of a family project. What do you mean by that? Well, my brother wanted to name me Cindy Ann. And my sister wanted to name me Lucy Ann, but my mother wanted to name me Cindy Lou. So what'd they do? 
Well, they put them all together in a hat and came out with Lucinda. You're lucky they didn't name you six and seven eighths, I guess, <laughs> Lucinda. Which is an old joke and a very bad joke, Lucinda. Which is the reason I'm going to say to you both, <laughs> let's look at the categories. Here they are on the board. These subjects are one-word titles, dropouts, Jims and James, famous firsts, potluck pictures, Japan, Wild West, movies of the 70s, and chemistry. There they are for you to pick from. Ron is our new champion. Where would you start? I'll start in the center with potluck picks, Wayne. So we will. And here's your question, Ron. Take a look at this picture and I'll ask you the question. These are the two stars of one of television's most successful comedy series. First, name the series, and then I want you to name either star. If you need it, it'll give you a few extra seconds. Okay, Ron, name the series. It's Mork and Mindy. Right. Name either one of the stars. Robin Williams. Right. The other one's Pam Dauber. All right, so we put an X in the center box, $300 to the pot. Let's move the categories around and move over to Lucinda. Lucinda, your first time to select a subject. What do you want to do? I'll try movies of the 70s. Okay, here's your question. Lucinda, this brilliant 1972 musical film starred actress Liza Minnelli as a nightclub singer in a pre-Nazi Berlin. Both she and her co-star, Joel Grey, won Oscars for their performances. Name the film. Cabaret. Right. Put it over there and let's chuckle. Moving the categories around, putting another two hundred dollars to pot. That brings it to five hundred, Ron. I'll try um, uh, Wild West, Wink. Wild West. The subject. Here's the question. Ron, a poker hand consisting of a pair of aces and a pair of eights, is called a dead man's hand because a famous Wild West hero was shot in the back while holding those cards. Name him. Uh, that's Wild Bill Hickok. Right. Wild Bill, put an X there. Let's shuffle again. Seven hundred dollars in the pot. Lucinda Dressel. I'm not really crazy about it, but I'll take chemistry to block. All right, for a block. To block Ron, answer this on chemistry. This precious bright yellow element was one of the first known metals and has the chemical symbol AU. For a block, name it. That's gold. Yes, that's right. So you did block. Very good. Let's move the categories around the board. Shuffle around on the board. Put an O there. Nine hundred in the pot, Ron. Uh, I'll have to go to one word titles to block Wayne. All right, to block Lucinda, answer this. According to the title of this 1966 Broadway show tune, who coaxed the blues right out of the horn for a block? Mame. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Coax the blues right out of the horn. Put it next there for a block. Four boxes left. Let's shuffle. Lucinda, you can pick from the subjects in those four boxes. What would you like? I'll take movies of the 70s to block. All right, again, for a block of Ron, Lucinda, answer this. In 1976, this actress won an Oscar for her portrayal of a success-hungry television executive in the movie Network. She also starred in the films Chinatown and The Eyes of Laura Mars. To block Ron, what's her name? Faye Dunaway. Yes, that's right, for a block. Put him over there. Three boxes left. Categories that show up to decide the outcome of the game. Let's see if that happens now as we shuffle. $1,300 in the pot. Chemistry, movies of the 70s, and famous firsts, Ron. Um, I'll go with famous first, Wink. Okay, here's your question on famous firsts. Ron, name the first of the Axis powers to surrender in the Second World War. Uh, Japan. No. Oh. Italy was first. Italy first. All righty, again, three boxes left. Let's see what happens now as we shuffle. 1,300 to pot. Lucinda, one word titles, potluck pictures and gems and james. I'll take potluck pics. Potluck pictures, the subject. Lucinda, take a look at this picture, please. This classic science fiction movie of 1968 spawned numerous sequels. Name it. Planet of the Apes. Yes, you got it. Very good. And another $200 to pot. We put an O there. The circle getting tighter and tighter. We're down to two boxes. Let's shuffle. $1,500 to the pot. Movies of the 70s and one-word titles, Ron. One-word titles to block, Wayne. All right, answer this correctly and you'll block Lucinda. Aerosmith and Babbitt are two novels by this American author. For a block, name him. Sinclair Lewis. You got it. That's right. For a block. Put an X there. One box left. The category that will appear in it will decide if we have a tie. So let's shuffle. Japan. $1,500 in the pot. Lucinda. Japan. <laughs> okay. Here's your question. The most popular sport in Japan, which is actually an American import, features a superstar player named Sadaharu O. Oh. For a tie game, name this sport. Baseball. Yes, we have a tie. We have a tie, and means we'll have nine new categories for you in the next game. Here's a commercial break, and then we'll return.